What's going on boys and girls, Brian here today, coming back with a brand new video. First things first, before we get into this, I, oh god, honestly, I have to say a huge thank you. Before I uploaded the last Genshin Impact video reacting to every trailer that I knew of, I was at 419 subscribers on YouTube. Now, usually for milestones, I like to maybe upload a video, do a stream to celebrate hitting the next one. Before I could even think about celebrating 500 subscribers, we're now at 1,300 subscribers and it was incredibly unexpected i was kind of emotional last night but i feel like i owe you all a huge thank you you guys showed the last video so much love if you haven't seen it yet i will leave a link in the description please make sure you go and watch it make sure you leave a comment below on this video i reply to every single comment the last video had over 700 comments every single one was responded to i love interacting with you guys the genshin community seems incredibly i don't even know the word incredibly incredible so welcoming and i can't wait to delve into what we're going to watch today because today we're going to be watching the collected miscellany a lot of you recommended this in the comments in the previous video if you're interested in watching the genshin streams live please be aware i will be streaming the game from tuesday and it will likely be a daily thing that i'll be doing i'll still be uploading to youtube for genshin content in case you can't be there for the streams but i would love to get to know more people in the community so feel free to follow the twitch channel links in the description below and i can't wait to get into this one thank you again and let's do this Okay, here we are with the Collected Miscellany. We've got the Venti Skyward Sonnet. Sonnet? First, let's get on with this one. A mysterious bard named Venti has recently appeared in the world, singing tales for the city of freedom and romance. I do love Venti. <laughs> this city is Mondstadt, the crown of the north. A free nation with no ruler. <gasps> Deluke! This I know who he is now. This bitter-cold land in the north of Tevat is now fertile. A blessing left by the god of Animo, they say. A thousand years have passed since the god of Animo left this land. Okay. A but thousand me, years. It has only been half that time. Come on, traveler. Let's go. The world is full of lost ballads just waiting to be rediscovered. Hell yeah. As an archer with the power of Animo, Venti can battle with ease in almost any environment. His versatile attack style and his ability to launch enemies with his elemental skill allow for a high oh, amount of mobility cool. in battle. Okay, his that's pretty cool. His elemental burst can pull together nearby enemies, oh. making him a strategic character who can both deal damage and control the battlefield. When Venti is in your party, what? gliding consumes less stamina for all characters. Huge, okay. Needless to say, <laughs> this skill will come in handy on your adventures. The elemental... Take Venti oh. along when exploring the beautiful open world. Normal attacks can perform up to six consecutive shots. The first and fourth shots can fire an extra arrow. While the sixth shot deals greater damage. Wow, okay. That's pretty cool. Hold the attack button to use a more powerful aimed shot. When fully charged, an animo-infused arrow is fired and deals even Whoa. more damage to the enemy. Call upon the wind on which hymns and songs fly to lift your enemies up into the sky. The when rhymes are so good. the elemental skill Skyward Sonnet, Venti summons a wind domain at the enemy's location, dealing area of effect animo damage. That's the enemies basic. are launched into the air and fall slowly to the ground. That's not even the ultimate, right? Hold Skyward Sonnet to summon an even larger wind domain around Venti. Dealing greater area of effect damage and launching enemies into the air. That's so cool. Venti also uses this powerful wind to fly high into the air. Adept use of this skill not only allows you to attack enemies. What if you could glide from that? But also dodge attacks and move around the environment. Oh, that's, does that get iframes? If the opportunity presents itself, you can also use a plunging attack from above. Oh, wind okay. Wind domains can even be utilized to help you get around. Oh my god, you can glide from it. Okay, that's After cool. After unlocking the talent Embrace of Winds, holding Skyward Sonnet will also create a temporary upcurrent as you fly into the air. By firing an arrow infused with coalesced winds, Venti creates a fierce storm that sucks in surrounding enemies and deals animo damage. Contact That's one of the coolest pyro, abilities I've seen yet. Or electro elements oh. Causes the storm to absorb that element and deal additional elemental damage. Oh, wow. The storm can only absorb one element each time. Oh, my God. That lightning one looks so After good. After unlocking the talent Storm Eye, 
Venti's energy will be replenished at the end of Wind's Grand Oath. If an element was absorbed, the energy of party members of that element will also be replenished. Even oh. though Venti is more than capable of handling different obstacles in battle, strategic party selection and teamwork can help you maximize Venti's abilities. First, use Divine Archery to attack enemies from afar. That wasn't and a fall. <laughs> away at their health. Use Skyward Sonic to launch dangerous enemies into the air. Gather up energy to prepare for the final That's attack. That's Mona, right? Mona? When your energy is full, unleash your elemental burst. Oh, it's Wings so good. Grand Ode sucks the enemies in and deals animo damage. Use another element on enemies in the storm to generate a swirl reaction. Oh my god. Then use another compatible element to cause an elemental reaction. Causing another elemental reaction brings the battle to a swift end. I As we all know, poetry and language flow like the wind. Venti captures this spirit in his ballads. Mm. Flora and fauna he sings of seem to have a life of their own and transport us to the moon and the stars. This self-proclaimed best bard of the mortal world best gets bard. his strength, his unwithering inspiration Aww. from the wind. Best boy, oh. But what Venti seeks in life is not eternal fame for his ballads. Rather, he'd be happy with a cup of wine and a liar to sing the marvelous stories of the world. Hey, cheers yes, to that. That would make Venti the Bard very content indeed. Gotta go get a glass of wine and play my piano now. <laughs> oh, that's so adorable. Venti's not really what I expected at all. I didn't expect to get as much kind of character uh, development kind of backstory from that. That's really cool. I like that a lot. And now we're on to the collected miscellaneous for Deluc. Oh. The, the top boy who I had no idea about until the you guys told me. As owner, Diluc dominates Mondstadt's alcohol industry. Oh? Wealth and information are at his fingertips. Yo, him and, him and Venia get along. Modest and refined, yet quick to act whenever Mondstadt faces a crisis. What caused him to choose this path? Hmm. Hmm. How very curious. There must How be those who curious. dare to pierce the darkness with their light. Oh, he's so cool. As one who wields pyro and a claymore, Diluc has perfected the art of violence and dominates the battlefield. With his powerful skills, Diluc causes massive damage with ease. Was that a and phoenix? And crushes all his foes with fearsome, ruthless strikes. What? Born a noble, Diluc is well versed in all things swords. With his guidance, no metal ore is wasted in their making. Oh, when that's cool. Forging claymores, Diluc recovers a set percentage of the ores used, aiding greatly in your adventure. Diluc's wow. normal attack performs up to four consecutive strikes, with the oh, fourth strike launching enemies. Holding the attack button, Constantly consumes Diluc's stamina to launch swift consecutive attacks, dealing increased physical damage to nearby enemies, and unleashing an extra God powerful damn. attack at the end <laughs> okay. that launches enemies. Use this wisely to scatter enemy groups and defeat shielded foes. Unlocking the talent Relentless decreases Diluc's charged attack stamina consumption and wow. increases its maximum <laughs> duration. Use his fierce attacks to defeat those before you. That's incredible, Using okay. Using the elemental skill Searing Onslaught, Diluc strikes with his Claymore, dealing Pyro damage. Oh my god, this I love Diluc already. This can be done three times in a row, with a short window of time to connect each strike. But pay attention. This skill enters cooldown if oh. the next strike is not activated in a short period of time. That makes sense, you gotta be Using tactical with it. Using Searing Onslaught in concert with normal attacks allows you to deal constant damage to enemies, while remaining evasive and mobile. Additionally, since this skill deals pyro damage, Diluc can form combinations with other characters using elemental reactions to deal greater damage. That one just melts. That's so cool. Surrounding himself in flames, Diluc knocks nearby enemies back before gathering the flames into his oh. blade and launching a phoenix. 
<laughs> dealing massive pyro damage to enemies in its path. Deluke's normal and charged attacks will also deal pyro damage oh for a period God. of time. Dawn has a very large hitbox, allowing it to not only strike airborne foes, but also forcibly reposition enemies to an extent, making it very strong against groups. The pyro damage conversion <sighs> that Dawn provides further strengthens Deluke's attacks. Unlocking the Blessing of Phoenix talent increases the duration of Dawn's pyro damage conversion and gives Deluke a pyro damage bonus. Diluc is, without question, a well-honed warrior. Yeah, he is. Who efficiently deals with any task. Now, please witness him in action. Diluc looks incredible. Actually begins incredible. suppressing the target with normal attacks. Combining it with his elemental skill to deal great pyro damage to the enemy. He weaves between these two attack modes to suppress okay. the foe more quickly. While building up elemental energy. He uses his elemental burst once Ain't his gonna push that boy full, back. Followed by attacks enhanced by Blessing of Phoenix. Defeating the enemy flawlessly. <laughs> Diluc's explosive, ruthless fighting style and his aloof manner are all admirable traits. But if the disaster from five centuries ago were to happen again, if he were to face the same evil that I once did, Ooh. would he still hold fast to his resolve? Ooh, who's the Norea? This too makes me most curious indeed oh my god oh i love diluc okay diluc is is one of my favorite characters that i've seen so far we didn't see much of him or any of him really in the uh in the previous video we saw him in the background a lot um that's his fighting style is incredible i'm super excited to be able to see more about diluc ah now we have my beloved the one and only clee jumpy dumpty <laughs> Okay, I just want to get into this. I, I loved everything about Klee. She's my spirit animal. I would like to there are many obtain her. people in Mondstadt's Knights of Favonius. <laughs> Among them is a small knight who raised Stormbearer Mountains flat. And whose name has recently become commonplace, both within Mondstadt and beyond. When it comes to Spark Knight Klee, there are rumors aplenty. Interestingly, those telling these rumors do so with a smirk and a shake of their heads. Joking I wonder that why. even Mondstadt's fish have learned to swim away when they see her. <laughs> oh, Can no. I come play with you today? Yes! Please? I'll take I you on all my adventures. An adventure. Well known yes. as the Spark Knight, <laughs> Klee is able to deal continuous pyro damage with her childlike glee oh. and a pack and pockets full of bombs. She's just so adorable. But watch out. As anything near her may be turned to ash in a fiery explosion. Oh my god. She's so funny. Klee loves adventures and is adept at expeditions and gathering. Not only does she know the locations of Mondstadt's unique flora, oh? she may also know where to find a treasure or two. Oh. When Klee is on your team, the location of items unique to Mondstadt will appear on your minimap. When it comes to anything explosive, Klee simply can't control her enthusiasm. <laughs> Klee's normal attack performs up to three consecutive explosive attacks that deal AoE pyro damage. I realized that was a normal Holding attack. The attack button consumes a certain amount of stamina, and after a short casting time, blasts enemies, dealing AoE pyro damage. When Klee is up high, her charged attack can reach enemies even farther away. Oh my god, also, I love it. Please, normal and charged attacks are especially effective against geo targets, oh. making them ideal against enemies ah. with geo shields. Explosion, yeah, that makes sense. Ore. Wow, After okay. After unlocking the talent's sparkling burst, when Klee's charged attack lands a critical hit, some energy will be restored for all party members. Use Klee's elemental skill to toss Jumpy Dumpty. Jumpy Dumpty will bounce three times. Each bounce causing an explosion that deals AoE pyro damage. On the third bounce, Jumpy Dumpty will burst into mines. These explode upon contact with enemies or after a short time, dealing AoE pyro damage. Jumpy what if that can Dumpty will uh, self recharge over time to up to two charges. Oh my god. It is effective in dealing with groups of enemies. Uh huh. After Jumpy Dumpty explodes, switch characters and pull enemies together to take advantage of the mines and deal a lot of damage to enemies. 
after God damn, unlocking okay. the talent pounding surprise, when Jumpy Dumpty and normal attacks deal damage, Klee has a chance to obtain an explosive spark. When Klee has an explosive spark, oh God. instead of consuming stamina, her next charged attack will expend the spark instead and That's deal cool. increased damage. Please blazing delight. Sparks what? and Splash continuously attacks nearby enemies for the duration of the skill, dealing AoE pyro damage. Sparks and Splash has high damage and attack rate. Oh my god, that's so good! Klee to deal immense damage while on the battlefield. Klee is able to continuously dish out strong pyro attacks. Yeah, that'd be such good her burst role damage. As the firepower of your party. Next, let's look at a battle to experience Klee's incredible yes. destructive capability. Show me your in action. Klee can use her elemental skill and normal attacks to repeatedly activate oh the effect of the talent pounding surprise and use charged attacks to suppress enemies. She's so cool. When her energy is full, unleash an elemental burst to further increase her ability to deal damage. After this, Klee can have fun causing explosions, <laughs> spreading flames in every direction, and burning enemies to a crisp. I think Klee's incredible. When the people of Mondstadt talk about their home. They proudly call it the City of Wind, Dandelions, and Freedom. Perhaps it was Mondstadt's atmosphere of freedom that led the famous adventurer Alice to entrust her daughter Klee to the care of the Knights of Favonius. Huh? With this oh. freedom, Klee has had a happy and unrestrained childhood. But all baby <laughs> birds must leave the nest someday. Hopefully <laughs> our little spark knight will remain just as happy-go-lucky when that day comes. I love her. And keep smiling all the way. I think she's my favorite person. Full stop. Honestly, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I, I think she's my favorite person. Just, and that's it. I really hope I can pull her at some point. Now we have the collective miscellany for Jean, the guiding breeze. We didn't know anything about Jean, I don't think. So this will be new. When Grandmaster Varka of Mondstadt's Knights of Favonius left on an expedition, his role passed to Jean, the eldest daughter of House Gunhildr. The young acting grandmaster had become a skilled swordsman through hard work, and works harder still for the sake of the knights. Self-sacrifice, after all, is the dandelion knight's path. Okay. As the wind continues wow, to that blow, sword. so too shall I continue to fight. I don't always has wind, excellent right? crowd control and support abilities, and can act in concert with others to suppress the enemy. Oh, that's cool. Jean's elemental burst can instantly restore her health. I also know who the other character is now, too. As well, making her the pillar of any team. Even when cooking, Jean is always concerned with helping others and can accidentally make extra helpings. Oh, wow, when that's Jean useful. When cooks a restorative dish perfectly, she has a chance to create two of them. All the better to face the battles ahead. That's really good. Okay. Jean can perform up to five consecutive normal attacks, dealing physical damage to enemies. Okay. Holding the attack button consumes a set amount of stamina and unleashes a wind-infused thrust that deals oh. high physical damage and launches enemies. Oh, it keeps them there, Launched too. Launched enemies will fall slowly for a short time, allowing Jean to control the flow of battle and give her teammates a chance to perform follow-up attacks more safely. Wow. <laughs> Unlocking the talent Wind Companion Give Jean's normal attacks a chance to heal all party members on hit. This healing wow. scales with Jean's attack power. Tapping her elemental skill Gale Blade causes Jean to gather formless wind on her sword and unleash a small storm, launching enemies in the direction Jean is aiming, dealing animo damage. Holding like Gale that. Blade constantly consumes Jean's stamina, pulling nearby enemies Wait, in you front can pull of her. The and allowing her to adjust the direction in which she wishes to launch them, dealing animo damage. Enemies launched by Gale Blade will remain clumped together when they fall, making follow-up attacks easier. Gale Blade is a very flexible ability. Strategic yep. use of yep, the surrounding that's what I wanted to do too. will often amplify its effects. Jean has to be using Wait, a lot of parties, right? Let me know down in the comments. Following she upon seems the wind's insane. Protection, Jean creates a dandelion field, knocking nearby enemies back and dealing animal damage. The field I... also quickly heals nearby allies and all party members. Oh, she's so this useful. This healing scales with Jean's attack power, 
The dandelion field continuously heals characters within it, infusing them with anima, while dealing animo damage to enemies who enter or leave the field. That's so cool. Once the talent Let the Wind Lead is unlocked, using Dandelion Field will regenerate some additional elemental energy. Jean can help her team take charge, aid in their attacks, and do great damage through skillful use of her abilities. Uh huh. A well rounded fighter indeed. I thought I was going to say, she seems Start very good at like a lot of things. Elemental skill, mop up nearby enemy <laughs> groups, and build elemental energy. Then use her charged attack to disrupt their movements, allowing your party members to switch in, attack, and deal damage. When your party wow. members have taken significant damage, use her elemental burst at the opportune moment to repel enemies and regenerate your team's health Get before the beginning edge. the yes. next round of attacks to finish the fight. <laughs> I'm having too much fun with this. I'm sorry. Experience. Mondstadt has only prospered since she assumed Varka's great responsibilities. Even I, who has seen countless people, must respect her desire to always defend Mondstadt. But unlike most who bear great burdens, this young knight has remained as tenacious as ever. Oh. How was her will molded, and what sustains her edge such that it never wears down? If fate wills it, I will find the answer to these questions. I seriously like the look of Jean. I think Jean seems, like the video said, like a really, really well-rounded character, but also just really fun to play. Having the ability to, like, pull enemies in and then fire them off in a certain direction, it might not be useful in every situation, but it sounds so fun. Now we have the Collected Miscellany for Chi-Chi, Fortune Preserving Talisman. Sounds ominous. <laughs> sounds strange, at least. Children as special as Chi-Chi are few and far between. That's why it sounds zombie, ominous. Time has no effect on her. But she has difficulty committing things to memory. For Chi-Chi, perhaps this is a good thing. She can forget her past and be an herb gatherer at Boo Boo Pharmacy. But those who underestimate her just for being a child do so at their peril. I am Chi-Chi. Uh -huh. I am a zombie. No, and you're adorable. I forgot what comes next. Same, it's okay. That's a mood. With her mastery over Cryo, Chi Chi is a powerful asset to your team. Despite her size, oh my she gosh, has the she's strength fast. to protect others. With Chi Chi by your side, you will always feel safe. Oh my god. When gathering herbs, she always knows where to find them. Because she always carries a notebook with her that has all their locations marked. Lest she go out and become completely lost. With Chi Chi on your team, I love the run. Will show areas where plants unique to Liyue grow, <laughs> making love the it run. easier to gather certain resources. Chi Chi's normal attack can combo up to five slashes, dealing physical damage to enemies. I love the fast Holding attacking the attack characters. Button consumes a set amount of stamina, and releases a two slash flurry, dealing high physical damage. Okay. Using Chi Chi's elemental skill, Herald of Frost, deals cryo damage to surrounding enemies. Okay, that's pretty cool. Herald of Frost moves with the character, dealing damage along the way. Wait. While also healing the current character periodically. Wow, it persists through character swap? Interesting, while okay. While Herald of Frost is active, normal and charged attack hits heal the entire party. Oh my party god. And nearby allies by a set amount based on Chi Chi's attack power. Those heals are incredible. Not only does this increase the team's endurance, it also allows you to dominate the enemy when paired with Hydro. This skill is also useful oh my during God. exploration. Using it to freeze water surfaces is a sound strategy for conserving stamina. Excuse After me? After unlocking the talent... Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold, hold the front door. You're just going to hit me with the fact that you can freeze water for exploration? And expect me not during to... Exploration. What? Using it to freeze water surfaces is a sound strategy for conserving stamina. After unlocking the talent Life Prolonging Methods, when a character under the influence of Adeptus Art Herald of Frost triggers an elemental reaction, incoming healing is increased. That's incredible. Sacred name, Fortune Preserver. I'm sorry, I'm when in shock. She releases the adeptal power sealed inside herself. She marks nearby enemies with a fortune preserving talisman and oh, deals wow. cryo damage to them. When enemies marked with fortune-preserving talismans take damage, the character dealing the damage is healed. 
By choosing an opportune moment to use Adeptus Art Preserver of Fortune, the whole team can be protected while dishing out damage. Chi Chi seems like an incredible healer. After unlocking the talent, a glimpse into Arcanum, normal and charged attack hits have a chance to tag enemies with a fortune preserving talisman once per set time period. Okay. Chi Chi <gasps> has the Dogs. ability to constantly heal. An excellent safeguard that helps keep your team alive. Please tell me you the can pet dogs in this game. The, battle, the more apparent Chi Chi's assistance becomes. Oh wow, dude, she's so cool. When entering battle, first use Herald of Frost to allow your team to deal constant cryo damage and easily trigger elemental reactions for greater damage. The effects of Herald of Frost will Holy. keep your team fighting fit until the right moment comes to unleash an elemental burst. Oh? Allowing your team to safely unleash all the firepower they've got. Oh, it's so good. I'm sorry. D Deluxe Phoenix is still incredible to me. As a zombie, Chi-Chi has escaped the grip of both time and death. How Chi-Chi entered this state of existence, I do not know. Mm. But I doubt it was of her own volition. Are the heavenly principles toying with her? Or is fate seeking to torture her? Is an ordinary life of simple pleasures really a thing so fragile? Oh. Oh. I don't really know why, but something tells me she's gonna have like kind of a sad backstory, and I, I really don't want her to. She's too precious. I feel like her and Clea would get on very well though. Okay, now we have Mona for the Stellaris Phantasm. Mona's the electric chick, right? I think, with the hat, the floppy hat. The stars illuminate all mortal destinies. The few oh. have eyes to perceive their meaning. Yes, she but is. But Mona, an astrologist newly arrived in Mondstadt, is able to read the fates of others through stars reflected in the water. Mm. But while no phenomenon is hidden from the astrologist Mona, she struggles often with the minutiae of daily life. It is a most common predicament. The more you seek truth, the more simple joys illuminate. <clears throat> She has, was ordained by fate. she has Long interesting physics. <laughs> Mona has skill that matches her reputation. As a hydro-aligned catalyst user, she masters the battlefield with ease. Oh, never mind. Mona the is the hydro lady. For her teammates to attack. As a student of all things in and under the night sky, Mona also has a strong grasp of weapon construction. In truth, okay. she finds that most weapons are wastefully made. When she crafts weapon ascension materials, she has a chance to recover a portion of the materials used. Wow, okay. Mona's normal attack performs up to four strikes that deal hydro damage. Holding I the attack button consumes a set amount of stamina. I love how she teleports. area of effect hydro damage after a short casting time. <laughs> Mona creates okay. a phantom of fate from coalesced water. This phantom taunts nearby enemies and deals continuous hydro damage to them. The phantom explodes when its duration expires, dealing area of effect hydro damage to enemies. It's pretty cool, and they look Only wet after the too. Elemental skill button causes Mona to ride a flow of water backwards and summon her phantom. This skill has many applications. The phantom can be used to taunt enemies, making them wet and priming them for attacks from Mona's allies. It also feels like that's the it oh shit button. Help her out of a pinch. Mm -hmm. When Mona sprints, she cloaks herself in flowing water, consuming stamina to move rapidly. Ending this skill causes Mona to emerge, getting nearby enemies wet. Illusory Torrent also allows Mona to travel huh? swiftly over water. Once her first passive talent is unlocked, Mona can create a phantom automatically if she maintains this skill for a certain period of time with an enemy nearby. Fate is upon you! Oh my god! Mona summons sparkling waves and creates a reflection of the starry sky applying the wet and illusory bubble statuses onto all enemies in the area. When affected by illusory bubble, weaker enemies will be imprisoned and unable to move. 
Attacking imprisoned enemies removes that status from them and deals an instance of hydro damage. When the status is cleared, the enemy comes under an omen. Enemies affected by an omen take more damage. So it's kind of like a... On the ever-changing battlefield, Mona's capacity for control cannot be overlooked. Try to think of the word in Dungeons and Dragons. Moments, controlling like a hex? And maximizing her teammates' damage. As the battle begins, she first summons a phantom. It taunts enemies and lets her switch out. Yeah, that's really cool. Oh my god. To cooperate with her teammates and deal massive damage to enemies. What do I feel like all of the characters so far she are really, really incredible? techniques to control enemies, allowing the party to damage them safely. All right, Once all the right. time is right, she uses her elemental burst to entrap enemies and attacks them to trigger damage bonus effects. This way, she can defeat the weakened enemies before her all in good time. Yeah, that pretty much melts the fire shields. Mona's hydromancy is indeed unique. No one can deny her intelligence and talent. Within Mondstadt, there are few who possess the ability and a desire to seek truth equal to hers. Mm. But beware, O oh young seeker. You must sacrifice your all to unravel the world's secrets. I don't like the sound of can that. Can the astrologist Mona truly bear such a burden? I'll sacrifice everything. Mona seems real cool, though. Her abilities seem really interesting. I love the, the sprint turning into water thing. My god, it looks so incredible. Okay, now we have Keqing, the Starward Sword. I like Keqing's name. Everyone in Liyue knows it is Rex Lapis who protects their borders. But the city's daily affairs are run by the Qixing. As Yuhang of the Qixing, Keqing acts decisively oh. and pragmatically. <laughs> I was confused Knowing for a second. Every inch of Liyue like the back of her hand. Yet as a representative of the mortals of Liyue, she has much to say about Rex Lapis's unilateral governance. I love the Liyue purple in the eyes. Era of change, wow. As the old order that has existed for a thousand years is about to be rewritten. Within the Qixing, Kuching is one for action. Ruthless efficiency is her modus operandi. Like her personality, her sword work is both swift and uncomfortable. Wow, okay. This, along with her control of Electro, oh. brings a shockingly abrupt end to any enemy. Kuching could not be more familiar with Liyue. Even on long journeys, she always finds what? a swift route back home. Okay. If dispatched on an expedition in Liyue, she will complete it more quickly than most. Ooh. That's pretty cool, okay. Kuching can unleash a combo of up to five normal attacks. Her final strike allowing her to pass through enemies. That's so cool. Oh my god. I'm sorry, that's really, really cool. I like that a lot. Swordsmanship is both offensive and defensive, offering a way to dodge some attacks and strike back from a better angle. That's gonna take stamina, right? Hold the attack button to consume stamina and release a two slash flurry, dealing high physical damage. I'm knocking back, okay. Tap Kuching's elemental skill Stellar Restoration to throw a lightning stiletto, which deals electro damage to enemies in a small area upon impact, and leaves behind a lightning stiletto marker. Okay. If Kuching uses Stellar Restoration again while the marker is still present, she flies to the marker and performs a quick slash, dealing electro AoE damage. She's so anime. Holding Stellar Restoration allows Kuching to aim the lightning stiletto before releasing it. Adept use of the lightning stiletto produces various results. Oh, wow. With the lightning stiletto, Kuching can flash into battle and attack from the best position. Oh, that's good. Okay. The lightning stiletto <laughs> can also be used in exploration to navigate challenging terrain. Kuching can also clear the lightning stiletto with a charged attack, causing a slashing thunderstorm that deals electro AoE damage at its location. God damn, okay. Deft use of this skill allows Kuching to creatively deal ranged damage. She seems a, a little bit more difficult After to play, unlocking but... unlocking the talent, Thundering Penance, really using cool. Stellar Restoration while the Lightning Stiletto is present, converts Kuching's normal and charged attacks to Electro Damage for a short time. Wow, okay. Cut to the chase! 
That's Pistol incredible. Unleashes her what? electro power, causing electro AOE damage. Hiding behind the shadow of her sword, she relentlessly slashes surrounding enemies at lightning speed, dealing multiple rounds of damage. With a final burst of electro AOE damage at the end. After unlocking the talent Aristocratic Dignity, casting Starward Sword increases Kuching's crit rate and energy recharge for a period of time. She's just full on DPS. Oh my god. Light on her feet and leaving no shadow. Kuching is a sharp addition to any team. Groups of enemies or single opponents are no match for a well executed combination of her skills. Kuching cuts them all down with ease. Does she have cut the ears? The combat with Kuching is mastery of the lightning stiletto. Or is it just a hairstyle? First, use her elemental skill to place the stiletto. Then, use her elemental skill again to zip into battle and strike quickly. Follow up with more electro damage, Ooh. using her elemental skill to suppress the enemy. Dodge it. And continue oh God, to use so the cool. lightning stiletto at opportune moments to frequently move and attack. Keep up the offensive to rapidly accumulate energy. I really do find this character incredible, but I find all of them incredible. <laughs> Starward sword and bring the fight to a perfect end. It quite literally Human is a perfect end to be here. written by the people. Even without the protection of the gods, is that a Tesseract? Would flourish as always. This is Kuching's belief. This desire to take fate into her own hands. I remember this feeling. Will Dog. she be able to bring her vision to life? To protect this land she calls home? In the hands of the Qixing, where is Liyue headed? The road ahead is unclear, Ooh. but we shall wait and see. I really like Kaching. I think she's really cool. I, uh... I really like the fast attacks, and I like the... I like the ultimate that she has, too, where it's the huge AoE burst thing. Ooh, okay, now we're on to Child. Thank you for letting me know how to pronounce child's name as well instead of me calling him Childe. I appreciate it, guys. Um, Foul Legacy. The Fatui from Snezhnaya are known to make waves wherever they go in Tavat. Mm -hmm. And Tartaglia is a driving force within them. Oh, yeah. Of the 11 Harbingers, 10 concern themselves with clandestine operations. Tartaglia is the sole exception. Rather than lure his enemies into a trap, he prefers to face them head-on, in one-on-one -on -one combat. That's about us. The wind is picking up. There is conflict in the air. So he's Hydro. His reputation precedes him. Child is known far and wide as a fearsome warrior. Well-versed in a variety of fighting forms. He can switch stances at will, and has two distinct modes of attack at his disposal. When Tartaglia is in your party, all characters' normal attacks gain one level, dealing what? increased damage as a result. Tartaglia is weakest with a bow, so he chooses to use one precisely to overcome this weakness. His normal attack can combo up to six consecutive shots. Charging oh my the God. attack executes a more precise shot that deals increased damage. While aiming, hydro energy accumulates on the arrowhead. A fully charged arrow will deal hydro damage to enemies on impact, and also apply the Riptide status to them. Okay. When an enemy is affected by Riptide, further hits from Tartaglia's fully charged arrows deal multiple bouts of area of effect hydro damage. Oh, that's incredibly cool. Also, when Tartaglia defeats an enemy affected by Riptide, it causes it a Hydro Burst, which applies the Riptide status to nearby enemies. Unlocking the talent never ending extends the duration of Riptide. Okay, Faced that's really a strong cool. Foe, Tartaglia will reveal his true might. When he casts his elemental Double blades. skill, he summons weaponry fashioned from pure hydro, dealing hydro damage to surrounding enemies in the process, and also switches to his melee stance. In this stance, his normal attack now combos up to six consecutive hydro slashes. Charging the attack, consumes stamina, and releases a two-slash flurry, dealing hydro damage. Oh my god. How do they manage to make all the characters In incredible? Stance, when Tartaglia strikes an enemy affected by Riptide, he deals area of effect hydro damage. 
Tartaglia exits melee stance when his elemental skill is cast again, or after a certain time has elapsed. Did they just combo he into then one? Then returns to his ranged stance, and his elemental skill enters cooldown. The longer Tartaglia the spends in melee stance, the longer the cooldown time. After unlocking Ooh, the talent okay. Sword of Torrents, when in melee stance, if Tartaglia deals a critical hit, the Riptide status is applied to the enemy. Oh, okay. That means his basic attacks as well, but the Hydro? His elemental burst will unleash one of two different attacks. Riptide! Okay. In ranged stance, Tartaglia swiftly fires a Hydro-imbued magic arrow ahead of him which deals area of effect hydro damage and also applies the riptide status to enemies. Afterwards, Tartaglia regains some of his spent energy. Shouldn't let your guard down. In melee stance, Tartaglia performs a slashing attack with a wide area of effect, dealing substantial hydro oh, damage good. to all surrounding enemies. And if the elemental burst hits an enemy affected by riptide, the Riptide effect will be consumed in a Hydro Explosion, which deals area oh. of effect Hydro damage. It's like a double, Tartaglia double ult. Tartaglia is a formidable warrior who lives for the heat of battle. That's gonna he hurt. He chooses his moments to attack and retreat. Ooh. And is tactical when selecting his mode of attack. This is what makes him so powerful. Mm -hmm. Faced with a single opponent, start by firing at them from a distance to apply the Riptide status. Then, enter melee stance and go in for the kill. Use fast and frequent attacks to trigger riptide effects and deal immense damage. Oh my god. Against groups of enemies, build up energy in advance and unleash an elemental burst in yeah. ranged stance to apply the riptide status to the group. Oh, that is just continuous then riptides. Enter melee stance and attack the enemies affected by riptide, hacking away at their health while also oh. restoring Tartaglia's energy. Wait for an opportune moment to unleash another elemental burst and take them all out in one go, bringing the battle to a clear-cut conclusion. Child's incredible. Do you know where Tartaglia acquired his fighting skills before becoming a Harbinger? Nor do many know where his lust for combat originates. There is a dangerous secret to the martial legacy he inherits, but it is one that even he himself that does not fully understand. Since becoming a Fatui Harbinger, fighting for the Tsaritsa is his new motivation as a warrior. Child is the Tsaritsa's weapon of war, and he stands for the might of Snezhnaya. Hey, stop An attacking us! A storm is starting to blow towards the other nations. Oh, wow. Brace yourselves. Tevat is about to get cold. Winter is coming. Oh, God, okay. I really like Child, aka Tartaglia. I think he's really cool. Now we have Zhongli, Dominance of Earth. Okay, okay. Here's my boy with the. When it comes voice. to Liyue's sacred traditions, the divinity is in the details. Even the most fastidious of academics don't claim to know them all. He's probably not going to speak yet, in this one. The mysterious funeral consultant, Zhongli, seems to know them like the back of his hand. The ancient rite of parting is a most unique tradition. Many details have been lost over time, but Zhongli is still able to perform the right to perfection. Mm -hmm. Though he looks young, Zhongli knows each ancient tradition inside out, but his own past is shrouded in mystery. So he's Geo, right? I think it was. Every journey has yeah. its final day. Don't rush. Zhongli excels ah. in manipulating Geo able to create and absorb geo matter and provide sturdy shields for his allies. This paired with his exceptional ability in combat makes him a reliable member of your party. <laughs> Zhongli seems to know Damn. everything about everything, even a simple chunk of white iron ore. He is able to pick out the best ore and use it to maximum effectiveness. Ooh. When forging pole arms, Zhongli recovers a set percentage of the ores used. Just for pole arms? Zhongli's normal attack can combo up to six strikes, dealing physical damage to enemies. Yo! Hold the, the attack button kick. to consume a set amount of stamina and lunge forward, casting down stone spears across Zhongli's path, dealing significant physical damage to enemies. Wow, okay. Tap Zhongli's elemental skill 
to summon the geoenergy from within the ground and form a stone steel, dealing area of effect geo damage to enemies. What While the, hell? the stone steel remains, it will periodically resonate with nearby geo constructs, dealing continuous geo damage to surrounding enemies. Oh, that's cool. You can take advantage of this in Will that even work with shields? Draw enemies affected by other elements like geo shields? stone steel to both deal geo damage and cause crystallized reactions. Use the elemental the shield created by Crystallize to help your party survive. Stone steels can also be used to block enemy attacks or climbed to traverse difficult terrain. Okay. Holden Zhong Li's elemental skill causes geo energy around him to explode, creating a jade shield and dealing area of effect geo damage. Yo. The jade shield absorbs damage. The amount absorbed scales with Zhong Li's max HP and is higher against enemies' geo attacks. If Zhong Li is surrounded by targets affected by geo, it will drain a large amount of geo energy from up to two of them. This effect oh, does not wow, deal okay. damage, but can effectively break down enemies' geo armor and nearby ore deposits. Yo! After unlocking the talent Resonant Waves, when the Jade Shield takes damage, it will fortify your character allowing their shield to absorb more damage. Okay. This is order. Is that Zhong a nuke? can bring a huge meteor crashing down, dealing massive geo damage and applying petrification to enemies caught near the impact site. What? The petrified enemies become immobilized. After unlocking the talent Dominance of Earth, Planet Befall deals additional damage to enemies, which scales with Zhang Li's max HP. Zhong Li maintains his composure, <laughs> even as he meets out punishment in battle. His exceptional ability to provide support and deal damage makes him quite prepared for any scenario. And he's hot. As the fight begins, first use Zhong Li's elemental skill to summon a stone steel and draw enemies near it, creating the ideal environment for dealing damage. Next, shield. create a jade shield to absorb incoming damage. Then. Alternate normal and charged attacks, meteor stringing strike. together attacks to deal enormous damage. When energy is full, unleash an elemental burst and coordinate your party's attacks to wipe out the enemy. That's just one character when too. Harbor oh grows God. restless on the eve of disaster. I have no As words. As the host of the Rite of Parting, I have Zhong no words. Li still calmly goes about his work. The world around him may be descending into chaos. Yet he remains unperturbed, sipping his tea and watching a good show. Quite the fascinating character. <laughs> As yeah. Liyue faces the turbulence of change, does he believe it is none of his business? Or is he also a player in this game, acting behind the scenes? Oh? It may be some time before the answers finally emerge. But no matter, for time is not something I lack. Time is not something I lack. Interesting. I'm excited to find out more about that when I play the game. <laughs> Which, as a reminder, since we are pretty much halfway through this now, I think, I will be starting to play this game live on Twitch on Tuesday, potentially streaming it daily. If you're interested in seeing a live playthrough, make sure you come and check it out. Link's in the description below. It'd be cool to see a lot of you there. And now we have Albedo Crider Prince. I have terrible pronunciation anyway. That was probably abysmal. I apologize. The city of Pastorals, Mondstadt, is as free as the wind. Even I an love Albedo like already, Albedo, though. ...can become chief alchemist of the Knights of Favonius. But on the other hand, his mastery of alchemy means that no one ever would have taken much persuading. <laughs> Mondstadt was never a nation known for its alchemy. I am excited to see Albedo's how he plays. Arrival, the Knights' achievements in the field sit only behind those of Sumeru's top scholars. Knights and academics... I think you guys Not said that was sucrose that too, right? Expect to hear in the same sentence. Sucrose. Albedo. Oh, he uses Geo too? Hmm. I don't know why I thought it would be something Instead different to Geo. Instead of leading the charge in combat, the calm and collected Albedo is better suited to providing support with reliable Geo damage. Still, his skill set allows him to deal powerful attacks, meaning he more than holds his own on the battlefield. Okay. 
Creation is the basis of alchemy. Albedo's knowledge allows him to find ways to improve crafting recipes and make better use of materials. When crafting weapon ascension materials, he has a chance of doubling the crafting output. Oh, wow. Okay, that's really cool. Albedo's normal attack can Go combo up to five strikes with his sword. Holding the attack button consumes a certain amount of stamina mm -hmm. and performs two swift forward slashes. With a knockback. Tap his elemental skill to create a solar isotoma using alchemy, dealing area of effect geo damage. A field is created around the solar isotoma. Periodically, when an enemy within the field takes damage, a transient blossom is generated at the enemy's location. Okay. The transient blossom scales off Albedo's defense, dealing AoE geo damage to surrounding enemies. A transient oh. blossom can only be generated once every two seconds. Additionally, making contact with the solar isotoma causes geo energy to accumulate, forming a crystallized platform that lifts the character up to a certain height. Only That's one pretty platform cool. can exist at a time. I feel like that'd be really cool for Klee. Strategic use of the crystallized platform lets you employ plunging attacks in battle and yeah. helps you deal with enemies up above. Throw those bombs, Klee. When adventuring, hold Albedo's elemental skill to choose the solar isotoma's position and use the crystallized platform to get past environmental obstacles more quickly. That's cool. After unlocking the talent Calcite Might, transient blossoms deal extra damage against enemies with low health. Crystallized Geo Energy bursts forth at Albedo's command, dealing AoE Geo damage in front of Albedo. If Albedo's Solar Isotoma is still present on the battlefield, seven Fatal Blossoms are generated in the Solar Isotoma field, which oh, wow. bloom aggressively, dealing AoE Geo damage. After Up until now, I didn't think he was as nature, cool as the others. Albedo's Boy. Elemental Burst increases nearby party members' Elemental Mastery for a period of time. Okay. There's, there's Albedo's always at least skill one thing. Set is a rare and invaluable asset in combat. Mm -hmm. Creative use of the solar isotoma greatly diversifies the battle, paving the party's way to certain victory. Wow. When the battle begins, create a solar isotoma with Albedo's elemental skill. As he and fellow party members attack enemies inside the solar isotoma field, transient blossoms appear and deal damage to enemies oh, wow. while generating crystalline shields through elemental reactions i changed my mind Solar isotoma uh, uh. also enables party members to unleash plunging attacks when energy is full have albedo unleash an elemental burst giving the whole party a performance boost with increased elemental mastery the one flashy move that he has is so good but it doesn't need to be flashy he, pro he provides a lot to the team okay okay albedo's good no one can dispute Albedo's talent, but the source of the knowledge he possesses, it once brought about the destruction of a glorious nation. Oh? All that most people know of him is his title, Crida Prince, and that he gained his position in the Knights on recommendation from Alice the Adventurer. Beyond this, the young man is a stranger to them, a complete mystery. And the essence of his knowledge is equally unknown. But okay. I know it well. It hails from Kanria, the art of Chemia. Soil and chalk, the universe and earth, pure dust and the birth of human life. There is no mistaking it. I am content to watch most crises play out from the sidelines. Mm. But if Albedo were ever to make a single wrong move, I could not let myself ignore it. Oh, I do want to say as well, by the way, the uh, the narrator for this, the voice actor is incredible. I could listen to this guy telling me bedtime stories. Okay, now we have Ganyu ambling amidst cast peaks. Okay, <laughs> that was a mouthful. Given Liyue's present prosperity, it's only natural that the city's operational support should match its scale. For millennia, oh, from the birth of the, the horns, Chisi, right? to its current roster of seven, they've all relied on the Yuehai Pavilion Secretary, the half-chilean yes. illuminated beast Ganyu, who assists the mortals in handling the most crucial matters. Although I detest deities, and have no liking for the Adepti who sign contracts with the Geo Archon, a person like Ganyu is still deserving of my respect. 
My job is to honor my contract with Rex Lapis by looking out for the interests of all living things in Leo. It is said that when Ganyu's a Chilin adorable. is brought to fight, the sun will lose its light. Ganyu is a force to be reckoned with, an archer with an exceptional aptitude for aimed shots. Her mastery over cryo wow. lends itself well to high damage burst attacks. Wow, it just freezes While them? her skills are of great help to her and her allies during combat. Through centuries Ugh. of training, Ganyu's archery has reached the acme of perfection. She excels at not only using bows, but also making them. Wow. Though she no longer needs to fight on the front lines, she still knows bow and arrow like the back of her hand. While forging bow-type weapons, Ganyu recovers a set percentage of the ores used. Okay, useful. Useful, useful, useful. Her normal attack can combo up to six consecutive shots, dealing physical damage to enemies. Charging the attack executes a more precise shot that deals increased damage. Based on its charge time, the shot generates different effects. I love how she's closing one eye too. Charge level one fires off an attention icy to arrow detail that is deals perfect. damage. Charge level two fires off a frost flake arrow that deals cryo damage and blooms after hitting its target, dealing okay, AOE that's awesome. cryo damage. That's oh, that's so cool. Frostflake Arrow's power is best used against distant groups of enemies to maximize its effect. It just keeps them fro- Oh my god. After unlocking the talent Undivided Heart, within a set period of time after shooting a Frostflake Arrow, the next Frostflake Arrow and its bloom will receive a crit rate bonus. Ooh! Tap Ganyu's elemental skill to dash backward, leaving an Ice Lotus in her place that deals cryo damage and continuously taunts surrounding enemies, attracting them to attack it. Any taunt is good. When destroyed, or once its duration ends, it blooms profusely, dealing AoE cryo damage. Ice Lotus's endurance scales based on Ganyu's max HP. Dexterous use of Ice Lotus can effectively redirect enemy fire, creating a safe environment for Ganyu to dish out damage. Over. Celestial Shower. Ganyu coalesces atmospheric frost to summon a sacred cryo pearl. While it's active, the sacred cryo pearl will continuously rain down shards of ice oh upon enemies within a set area, dealing cryo damage. Celestial Shower deals damage while serving as a reliable source of cryo that allows Ganyu's allies to trigger corresponding elemental reactions and further increase their damage output. After unlocking the That's talent insane. Harmony Between Heaven and Earth, with Ganyu and your party, all active party members within Celestial Shower's AoE gain a cryo damage bonus. Okay. As an archer, Ganyu knows to keep her enemies at a safe distance and avoid close quarters combat. A constant barrage of Frostflake arrows is what makes her strength truly shine, leading her to victory. Ganyu can use her elemental skill to get out of harm's way and taunt her opponents, allowing her to then fire Frostflake arrows unbothered, dealing damage to groups of enemies from afar. The thing that I love about this is the fact that... When her energy is full, Ganyu can Hold unleash on. her elemental burst to further increase her ability. No, you know what? I f the thing that I love about this game and the way that the characters work, I can't, I can't not say this. This isn't my usual playstyle for a character. But the fact that it goes so well with other characters' abilities and playstyles, it doesn't need to be. Like, every character that you pull doesn't need to be the playstyle that you're used to or the playstyle that you enjoy. If I was to freeze enemies in place and then switch to a child, for example, who uses Hydro and is super quick and that is my kind of playstyle, that's incredible. I love the fact that you can have such a diverse group and probably still get really far. I think that's incredible to deal damage. When facing more formidable foes together with her allies, Ganyu's ability to taunt and infuse enemies with cryo is an effective form of support for the whole party that allows <laughs> for defeating enemies in one fell swoop. The Liyue Qixing has changed over generations. Centuries have passed in the blink of an eye. Ganyu's accompanied Liyue through many a storm, but Liyue Chi -chi. Harbor itself can this city really become a safe harbor for an adeptus in the world of mortals?
when the Geo Archon Morax was alive, an Adeptus like Ganyu could find a sense of belonging in the human city. But at present, when the rite of parting has already marked his end, the loneliness of an inhuman living in the human world, will it take Ganyu over completely? Oh god. I mean, I hope not. Okay, now we have Zhao, Conqueror of Demons. Okay. <laughs> Many fell in the Archon War. But though their life force faded, their power and malice survived as remnants, posing a continued threat to the world. In Liyue, the task of ending this threat, or rather, enduring it, falls to Xiao. Oh, to Xiao Liyue, is... He has Xiao a is mask. a name seldom heard, and as the few who have seen him can attest, he appears only when grave danger is nigh. Coming across this Adeptus, should one count their blessings or their curses? Oh. Conquering demons is what I do. Animo, which is wind, I think. Dude, he is as so the conqueror cool. of demons, Shao's abilities are unparalleled among the Adepti. As such, he vanquishes demons without breaking a sweat. Hell yeah. Shao is agile. His movement skills allow him to dart around the battlefield. And when he dons the mask of the Yaksha, his abilities are enhanced even further. Oh my god. As he purges evil and protects Lyra. After years of honing his abilities, what? Xiao has developed an Adeptus art that affords him strength at high altitudes. When Xiao is in the party, the active character consumes no! less stamina <laughs> while climbing. Xiao's normal attack can combo up to six strikes, dealing physical damage to enemies. Oh, damn. Holding the attack button causes Xiao to consume stamina and perform an upward thrust, dealing physical damage and lifting enemies into the air. Okay. While airborne, press attack to perform a plunging attack, striking enemies on the way down and dealing AoE damage upon landing. His playstyle looks really fun. Xiao will not lose HP from a plunging attack, no matter how high he starts. Oof. That was barely any, though, Use to be Xiao's fair. Use Xiao's elemental skill to lunge forward, dealing animo damage to enemies in his path. The black and green Make looks so well together. To oh. dart effortlessly around the battlefield. Was it like a turquoise? tactically adjusting your position. I don't even know, it just looks so good. Also, lemniscatic wind cycling can be used while airborne, making it huh? easy for Xiao to navigate challenging terrain, aiding with exploration. <laughs> lemniscatic okay. wind cycling starts with two charges available. After unlocking the talent Dissolution Eon Heaven Fall, if Xiao uses multiple charges in quick succession, damage dealt increases with each one. Wow. Evil conquering! When Xiao unleashes an elemental burst, he dons the Yaksha's mask that once struck fear into gods and demons alike. His attacks now deal animo damage, which cannot be overridden by another elemental infusion. And Xiao's attack AoE and damage are both increased. In addition, Xiao's jumping ability is greatly enhanced, allowing him to assail the enemy with plunging attacks. The Yaksha's mask brings what? enormous power, but also great suffering. Oh god. During Xiao's elemental burst, oh, he will continually a... lose HP. There's always this a vice. effect stops if he leaves the field. After unlocking the talent Conqueror of Evil, Tamer of Demons, while Bane of All Evil is active, Xiao's damage gradually increases. What? Oh wow. When Xiao oh, like goes a into beast battle, pellet danger from Bloodborne. follows in his wake. <laughs> To avoid harming others, he acts quickly, completing the task at hand as efficiently as possible. As the fight begins, He's Xiao edgy. uses his elemental skill to move rapidly around the battlefield, changing strategic positions, dealing damage as he goes, and building up energy. When his energy is full, he unleashes his elemental burst and harnesses the power of the Yaksha's mask to incapacitate the enemy with plunging attacks and finish off every last one. Jeez. He looks so For good. For millennia, tales of the Yakshas have been told in Liyue. But over time, these defenders of the masses have all but disappeared. Only Xiao still honors his contract with the Geo Archon, 
by performing the duties assigned to him, though the cost of this duty is perpetual solitude. Oh. I know that Adepti suffer heartache just as I do, but I cannot know Xiao's future. Will Xiao be ravaged by the unending war he wages and be plunged into despair? Or will he meet someone who understands his sacrifice and can shine a ray of light into his dark world? Oh, God. Am I ready for the emotional roller coaster this game's gonna send me on? <laughs> Okay, and now we have Hu Tao, Fragrance in Thor. Now I do know who Hu Tao is. <laughs> the people of Liyue value tradition, and their traditions are embodied in all manner of rites. Of these, the rites that mark life's end are of utmost importance. Ping the ghost. Liyue's funeral rites are complex, and only Wangsheng Funeral Parlor can conduct them to the satisfaction <laughs> of all. She's real cute. I like her a lot. Wang Sheng has stood for 77 generations and has gained still greater fame in recent years, thanks to their eccentric young director, Hu Tao. When the sun's out, bathe in sunlight. But when the moon's out, bathe in moonlight. Hell yeah. Hu Tao manipulates Pyro with ease and can sacrifice her HP to increase her damage output. Cleansing Ooh. the world of impurities with an unrelenting flame. God damn, okay. When Hu Tao cooks a dish perfectly, she has a chance to obtain a suspicious dish of the same kind. Suspicious? Hu Tao's normal attack can combo up to six strikes, dealing physical damage to enemies. Hu Tao's charged attack consumes Ooh. a set amount of stamina to lunge forward dealing physical damage to enemies in her path. I like that. Hu Tao also has a unique effect when sprinting, allowing her to briefly disappear and pass through certain small foes. Oh my god, it's so cool. Hu Tao consumes part of her HP to cast her elemental skill, knocking nearby enemies back and entering the Paramita Papilio state. This converts her attack damage to pyro damage which cannot be overridden by another elemental infusion. Her resistance to interruption is also increased, and she receives an attack increase based on her max HP when entering this state. Okay. Paramita Papilio ends after a set duration, or when Hu Tao leaves the field. After unlocking the talent Flutterby, ending Paramita Papilio increases the crit rate of all of Hu Tao's party members other than herself for a set duration. Moreover, what? while Paramita Papilio is in effect, Hu Tao's charged attacks apply the Blood Blossom effect to enemies it hits. Enemies affected by Blood Blossom will take pyro damage at set intervals. This effect automatically expires after a while. Only one Blood Blossom can exist on any one target at a time. And only Hu Tao can refresh its duration. Okay. Wang Sheng has a long heritage. It's said that their directors passed down a secret technique to traverse between life and death. What? Unafraid in the face of death, they instead unleash yet greater power. Once the talent Sanguine Rouge is unlocked, Hu Tao gains a pyro damage bonus when her HP is low. Oh my god. Pyre, pyre, pants on wow, fire. so the Hu Tao commands a blazing spirit to deal pyro damage in a large AoE. So you could when reduce your health with the ability to enemies, deal more damage. Hu Tao regenerates a certain percentage of her max HP. Mm. A maximum of five enemies can affect this percentage. <laughs> Additionally, using this skill when Hu Tao's HP is low, deals greater damage and regenerates more HP. Okay. Hu Tao's unique fighting style often imperils her. As such, she must coordinate with her teammates and choose the right moment to use her skills and manage her HP. Definitely. Everything feels like it's it would work Hu with Tao her though. often begins by using her elemental skill to enter the Paramita Papilio state. Then she alternates between normal and charged attacks to deal pyro damage, applying blood blossoms onto enemies. 
She then wow. leaves the field, using the crit rate increase from Flutterby to increase her teammate's damage output. When Hu Tao's HP is low, she can choose a group of enemies upon which to unleash her elemental burst, dealing pyro damage yeah, that's and so regenerating cool. her HP. It's like if there's a lot of One enemies here, it's a free heal. Parlor conducts rites of utmost solemnity, and its staff are used to speaking little. Okay. Making Hu Tao's liveliness seem an ill fit. Her elders once criticized her mischief making, but having seen her immaculate conduct of the parlor's affairs, introduce it a clean. But admit their error. Life want to see mischief? Are but two halves of an endless cycle. <laughs> life leads oh, unto Gigi. death, and death unto new life. Why then should death be taboo? Mm. Hu Tao has had the wisdom to see this, though some of her elders have yet to do so. I like Hu Tao. I like every single character so far, though. Okay, we have Rosaria, the Purger of Shadows. Now, I really like Rosaria. Ronstadt's I like how she Church looks. The Church of Favonius has a very unique sister, Rosaria. She just looks Despite so badass. Despite being a priestess, she has never been witnessed offering prayers to the gods. Swift of foot and aloof in speech, she becomes active in the darkness of Mondstadt's night. She belongs to a clandestine side of Mondstadt, brandishing sharp blades under the moonlight to strike down intruding shadows. In exchange for the people's freedom and peace, the non-believer is tasked with purging the filth that no light will touch. Wait, that was like Orin. She's mm. Cryo, right? City blessed by the Animo Archon. Yeah, Sleep she's Cryo. Seventy. Okay. Pray, not for the gods nor the betterment of others, but for yourself. <laughs> Rosaria oh has she's powerful one-on-one so cool. -on -one combat capabilities, and as a wielder of a Cryo vision, her elemental burst can provide continuous Cryo damage. What? Assisting the party with damage output and field control. Oh, that's cool. When Rosaria is in the party, she increases the movement speed of party members during nighttime. This effect cannot be applied in domains, trounce domains, or the spiral abyss. Interesting. Rosaria's okay, that's an interesting kind of passive talent. Up to five consecutive strikes, dealing physical damage to enemies. With a launch. Holding the attack button allows Rosaria to consume a certain amount of stamina to lunge forwards. Like Hu Tao's. physical damage to enemies in her path. Tapping Rosaria's elemental skill swiftly positions her behind her opponent. She then pierces and slashes the enemy with her polearm, dealing cryo damage. Ravaging Confession can be used to quickly approach an enemy, identify an advantageous position, and oh, launch that's good. her assault. It can also be used to dodge enemy attacks, oh, allowing wow. you to turn the tide of battle. I assume those it is abilities have iframes. that Rosaria cannot use this ability to move behind larger enemies. Ooh, okay. After unlocking the talent Regina Probation, whenever Rosaria strikes an enemy from behind with Ravaging Confession, her crit rate will increase for a short period of time. She's like an assassin. Lights out. That's how I see her right now. For her That's elemental cool. burst, Rosaria swings her polearm around her, striking all nearby foes. What's that An defense down? An icy of coalesced frost then strikes the ground, dealing cryo damage. While the ice lance is present, it will intermittently emit a freezing chill, dealing cryo damage to nearby enemies. Uh huh. Strategically utilizing the ice lance through elemental reactions allows party members to control or inflict even greater damage upon Elemental enemies. reactions is one of the most, the coolest After things that I've seen in a video game. Samaritan, when Rosaria uses rites of termination, all party members except for Rosaria receive a temporary increase to their crit rate based on Rosaria's own crit rate. Ooh, okay. Okay. Rosaria, Throwing herself into battle turns daytime idleness into the biting blades of winter that plunge into the bones of the guilty. As the battle begins, coordinate attacks with the other characters in your party and use elemental skills to trigger elemental reactions. At the same time, quickly shift behind the enemy and follow up with normal attacks. Oh my god. When Rosaria's energy is full, Use her elemental burst to inflict Whoosh. continuous cryo damage, then leave the field. 
Use the crit Dylan. rate increase from the talent Shadow Samaritan to assist the other party members in swiftly defeating foes. God damn. Mondstadt's nights are peaceful and tranquil, but in the quiet of the dark, there are those who glimpse a flash of cold steel. This is the dour sister who meets out punishment to protect this place of peace and the sisters who are purity incarnate. Unperturbed with dirtying her hands, she has become a blood-soaked executioner. And having witnessed the cruelty of this world, she can no longer close her eyes and extol the blessings of the gods. Rosaria, the most unique sister in Mondstadt's Church of Favonius, never needed redemption from the gods, for she grasped it with her own hands. She's so goddamn cool. Oh. Okay, and now we have Yan Fei, the blaze of illegal brilliance. Let's get into this Yue one. is both the nation of contracts and the beating heart of trade in Tevat. Its laws are rigorous and exhaustive, serving as pillars of order in a fluid population. But those able to memorize and abide by all the laws of the land number few indeed. Accordingly, when civil disputes and criminal proceedings arise, the first point of call for many is Liyue Harbor's famed legal advisor, Yan Fei. Yan Fei. Only by adhering to the law can the people solve life's myriad of problems. Not Hu Tao. Honored as Liyue's top legal expert, Yan Fei knows the law like the back of her hand, as well as how to bend it, balancing legality and humanity. Her expertise routinely resolves the most intractable of disputes. But if confronted by those who act with flagrant disregard for the law, it is Yen Fei's command of fire and flame that will Ooh. place them in jeopardy. Ooh, her fire looks As cool. As Liyue's most sought-after legal advisor, Yen Fei provides legal support across the whole of Liyue, which has allowed her to explore many of its hidden corners. Having mastered the legal codices, she is well-versed in the various local specialties traded by the waterfront. When Yen okay. Fei is in the party, the location of resources unique to Liyue appear on the minimap. Was that a pig? Making it easier to gather certain items. Ooh. Yen Fei's normal attack casts a fireball and can be comboed wow. to deal up to three rounds of pyro damage. Hitting an enemy with a normal attack grants Yen Fei a single Scarlet Seal. Okay, she can possess Scarlet a maximum seal. of three Scarlet Seals at a time. Gaining a new Scarlet Seal resets the duration of existing seals. Each Scarlet Seal decreases Yen Fei's stamina consumption, and they will disappear when she leaves the field. Holding the attack button consumes a set amount of stamina and releases a charged attack. Oh, it's the judgment way. AOE pyro damage in the area in front of her. Any Scarlet Seals held by Yen Fei are consumed when a charged attack Ooh. is released, and the AOE and damage of this attack are increased based on the number of Scarlet Seals consumed. That's real cool. Okay. After unlocking the talent Proviso, when Yen Fei consumes Scarlet Seals with a charged attack, each Scarlet Seal will increase Yen Fei's pyro damage bonus for a set period. If she uses a charged attack again during this period, it will end the effect. It'll end the effect? Interesting, Yen okay. Yen sharp eyes and keen wits aid her in singling out opportunists and lawbreakers, whilst the adeptal power that resides within her helps when it comes to serving out justice. After unlocking the talent Blazing Eye, when Yen Fei's charged attacks deal crit hits, she will deal an additional bout of AoE pyro damage. Tap Yen Fei's elemental skill to summon blistering flames oh, that's that cool. deal AoE pyro damage. <laughs> Hitting an enemy with her elemental skill. I love that animation for being on fire. Number of Scarlet Seals, oh wow. Which she can use to unleash a follow-up charged attack. Wow, keeping okay. Keeping all firmly in her court. Inadmissible evidence! Uh-oh. Unleashing Yen Fei's elemental burst triggers a spray of intense flames that rush at nearby enemies, dealing AoE pyro damage. I want to see that again. Her the maximum number of Scarlet Seals, as well as applying Brilliance to her. Brilliance grants Yen Fei a Scarlet Seal at fixed intervals. Oh wow! Also okay, that's cool. The damage dealt by her charged attacks. Did that just double the damage? Hold also on. Also increases the damage. Oh no, okay, I thought it said 669, nice. And 1,807, okay, Still okay, never mind. Still really good. Adept use of brilliance 
allows Yen Fei to increase her Scarlet Seal accumulation rate and string together charged attacks, dealing greater damage to her enemies. That's incredible. Yen Fei's okay. flaming seals are a powerful legal instrument, and her terms of use ensure that they bolster her position in any form of dispute. What is the animal By on top of the thing? Scarlet seals, is it an animal on the way? with an enhanced charged attack, it's like Yen a baby Fei deer. can rule decisively on any case before her. During battle, Yen Fei can alternate between normal attacks and her elemental skill to deal pyro damage to enemies and gain Scarlet Seals. With Scarlet Seals in her possession, Yen Fei can release powerful charged attacks to put the enemy on the back foot. When Yen Fei's energy is full, unleash her elemental bursts to further increase her damage output. At this stage, okay. Yen Fei needs only to release regular charged attacks to rout her enemies once and for all. Not bad, not bad. Yen Fei was born during Liyue's peacetime. Though part Illuminated Beast, she never signed a contract with the Geo Archon. Illuminated Unconstrained beast. by Adepti responsibility, she keeps herself busy in the city, experiencing all manner of worldly affairs, comprehending all levels of human emotion. In her hands, the legal codices are a contract, a tool, a framework of reason, but never a cage. She longs for a free-spirited life well within the confines of the law. But each detail of the cumbersome legal codices is also dear to her heart. Perhaps Aww. one day, a balance can be struck between them. Hopefully. I really like her as a character. I don't think she's my kind of playstyle. I know she probably goes well with a lot of other characters, like I mentioned before. Um, but the abilities and the, the combos and everything seem a little bit more basic than the rest of them, I think, for me. And now we have Eula, the Surging Frost. Okay, I haven't seen much of Eula, Ever I don't think. Ever since the first night of Favonius rid herself of her chains, the winds of freedom have carried the fight against oppression into every corner of Mondstadt. Or oh, Am I today, lying? Among the ranks of the knights sworn to champion freedom, there walks a descendant of the former tyrannical aristocracy. I don't remember seeing the any progeny much of, of Eula. An infamous lineage with vengeance always on her lips is the captain of the Knights of Favonius Reconnaissance Company, the Spindrift Knight, supremely skilled with Oh, I do remember. The Spindrift Knight, her that rings more the bell than Eula. leaves many wondering why the knights would accept her. Perhaps because oh, she's the, the songs of one. freedom woven into the Mondstadt winds first asked, why not? Yes! Ready for reconnaissance. Okay. Show me a dance, Eula. Naturally, Eula earned her captaincy with her superior capabilities. Masterfully oh. combining Favonia's blade work with cryo magic, she forms frost at the tip of her blade, which she wields with the cadence of a dancer. Waltzing gracefully into battle, she then strikes like a crashing wave. She's so graceful. Eula derives no additional status in Mondstadt from her once noble lineage, but finds herself the victim of a strict and outmoded education. She dismisses what she was taught as pointless pretension, yet is unable to escape its influence entirely, often subjecting herself to meticulous introspection. When Eula crafts talent level up materials, she has a chance to double the output, boosting the party's adventure readiness. I like that. I like the characters that Eula's do that kind of thing. attack can combo up to five strikes that deal physical damage to enemies. I also just love how characters have talents and passives like that. Stamina. While Eula unleashes a rapid string of slashes, also oh my dealing God. physical damage. Oh, it's the frozen when version of When the charge ends, she unleashes a powerful strike that launches smaller enemies within her range. Oh my God, it actually is. It actually is. Tap Eula's elemental skill, Ice Tide Vortex, to perform a rapid slash that deals cryo damage. Pretty cool. When the slash hits an enemy, Eula gains one stack of Grimheart. Grimheart. The effect has a maximum of two stacks. Grimheart increases Eula's resistance to interruption in her defense, creating optimal conditions for her to dish out damage. Wow, okay. <laughs> Holding Ice Tide Vortex causes Eula to consume all stacks of Grimheart and perform a spinning frontal slash that deals AoE cryo damage. Okay, if that's really cool. If this attack consumes Grimheart stacks, it will decrease the physical and cryo resistance of surrounding enemies. Each stack of Grimheart consumed will convert to an Ice World Ramp, dealing cryo damage to nearby enemies. Blood of Frost! Glacial Illumination. Eula's elemental burst unleashes a mighty slash of her sword, 
dealing cryo damage to surrounding enemies and forming a lightfall sword that follows her around. Oh, it fall. While the lightfall sword is present, Eula's resistance to interruption is increased further. Additionally, when enemies are damaged by Eula's normal attack, elemental skill, or elemental burst, the lightfall <laughs> sword's energy is charged. When its duration ends, the lightfall sword will descend and explode violently, dealing it's... physical damage to surrounding enemies. So she's like a DPS The damage dealt increases with the lightfall sword's charge stack. When Eula leaves the field, what? the lightfall sword will instantly explode. Wouldn't Eula After be really good with the Xiong Li? Roiling rhyme, when Eula holds Ice Tide Vortex, if two stacks of Grimheart are consumed together, a shattered Lightfall Sword is created and explodes immediately, dealing half the base physical damage of the Lightfall Sword. Years of reconnaissance company campaigns have honed Eula's instinct for launching surprise Wellspring of offenses. Warlust. When she strikes, waves of frost and rays of light surge forth like ocean spray. After unlocking the talent Wellspring of Warlust, casting Eula's she Elemental like Burst the... immediately grants one stack of Grimheart and resets the cooldown of her elemental skill. She is like the, the cryo version of Diluc. The Spindrift Knight's battleground is the kind shadows of. far beyond Mondstadt's city walls. Eula's strength is in hunting down her enemy with courage and calculation, mm -hmm. striking with her frosty Favonius blade. In combat, Eula often starts the offensive with her normal attack, interspersing her strikes with the tapping effect of her elemental skill to keep up the pursuit and accrue Grimheart stacks. Next, holding her elemental skill at an opportune moment will deal damage to her enemy, while also reducing their physical and cryo resistance by consuming the Grimheart stacks. God damn. When Eula's energy is full, Unleashing her elemental burst puts further pressure on the enemy and creates a light fall. <laughs> now is the time She's for so a cool. rapid offensive to charge the light fall sword and finally take down the enemy when it explodes. That's incredible. She seems really fun to play. There She'd be a really good with asset. Hatred in their hearts that are able to do what Eula has done. Take the lust for vengeance yeah, bequeathed to them by fate and channel it into a force for self-advancement. For Eula, this has set her down a path of peace and inner strength. Still, there are others for whom the passage of time does nothing to quell the poison spreading through their souls. Hmm. Only the future will reveal the path they take, but inevitably, it will be a different one. Oh, I really like Eula. Okay. Okay. Okay, and now we have Katahara Kazuha, Free Spirit. This guy was really cool no from what I remember. No one sure when they first noticed it, but once in a while, from the deck of the Alcor, flagship of the heavily armed Crux fleet, the soft sound of a flute can be heard, following the ocean breeze to wherever it may lead. Trace the sound back that to wasn't its Rosaria, source, right? and you will see a young samurai of Inazuma, calmly sitting in a crow's nest, playing a leaf flute, while taking in the sights yes. and sounds of the natural oh, world. This is the but guy that the does the really cool about his story. And you'll spin find tornado a thing. Little more than you. I like the, I like this character is, a lot. He is a trainee sailor from Inazuma. His name is Kaidahara Kazuha. Come driving rain or winds that churn. I shall return by blade alone, armed if barefoot, to my home. I like him. Many look at Kaidahara Kazuha and see but a young face. What they miss is a swift and deadly samurai wanderer who is not to be taken lightly. Kaidehara Kazuha has the ability to manipulate Animo and provides an elemental damage bonus for members of his party. Also, with his elemental skill, he can make frequent use of special plunging I think attacks her name was. that keep enemies grouped together, providing great support to his party. Wow. Wow. Okay. Like a leaf on the breeze, he is light as a feather and swift as a blade. I feel like he's a when necessity Kaidahara to have. Kazuha is in your party, he reduces sprinting stamina consumption for your party members, Which making is incredible. exploration faster. Kazuha's normal attack can combo up to five strikes that deal physical oh, damage to God. enemies. Hold the attack button to consume a set amount of stamina and perform two swift slashes to his front, dealing high physical damage. And a back. While Kazuha is airborne, 
Pressing the attack button causes him to perform a plunging attack, damaging wow. opponents along the path and dealing AOE damage upon impact. Tap his elemental skill, Chihayaburu, to unleash a secret blade technique. Pulling enemies and objects toward him, launching enemies within his range, and dealing animo damage. Kazuha uses the gust of wind generated in this moment to soar up into the air. For He's a incredible. short period after using Chihayaburu, while Kazuha remains airborne, he can unleash a powerful plunging attack. Oh, Midare what? Manza. The damage dealt by this plunging attack is converted to animo damage. It creates a whirlwind too. When lands, he uses another secret blade technique to create a wind tunnel that pulls in nearby <laughs> enemies and objects. With this effect, Kazuha can concentrate enemies in one place, allowing other party members to attack more efficiently. Chihayaburu is a skill that can be oh my used God, okay. while airborne, giving Kazuha great agility when out exploring. Incredible. When Chihayaburu is held instead of tapped, Kazuha deals increased animo damage over a wider area. After unlocking the talent Somon Swordsmanship, Kazuha's elemental skill can absorb Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro Cast. If a Midare Ranzan plunging attack is performed before Chihayaburu's effects expire, it deals additional elemental damage of the absorbed element. Only one elemental absorption That's can incredible. occur per Chihayaburu. Oh my god. Clouds high. I swear, the, the elemental call. infusions are the best thing in this entire thing for me. Kaidahara Kazuha's elemental burst is the pinnacle so cool. achievement of his self-taught blade work. He strikes with the force of the first winds of autumn, dealing AoE animo damage. This attack produces a field called Autumn Whirlwind. The field periodically deals animo damage to enemies within it. If Autumn Whirlwind comes into contact with Hydro, mm -hmm. Pyro, Cryo, or Electro, I'm in love it will with this game. That element and deal additional elemental damage. This elemental absorption may only occur once in its duration. Wow. Kazuha can use the Autumn Whirlwind field to easily affect multiple enemies with an element, creating ideal opportunities for his allies to Wait. attack. Did it just sit on fire because of the, the campfire? Blows to all within its vast reach and Is that a thing? The coming fall from the first withered leaf. For a set duration after Kazuha triggers a swirl reaction, all party members receive a damage bonus for the corresponding element. Ooh, for the corresponding the element. Bonus scales oh, off wow. of Kazuha's elemental mastery. If multiple elemental damage bonuses are gained in this manner, Where's they Aria? are applied concurrently. Kaidahara Kazuha has roamed far and wide and is wow. acutely sensitive to changes in the natural environment. When the way ahead is rocky, his mastery of Animo allows him to swiftly turn the tide of the battle, guiding the whole party to victory. In combat, he coordinates closely with his teammates to apply elements to enemies. Then, he uses his elemental skill to gain control over the opponents following up here and there with powerful plunging attacks to keep them where he wants them, while also activating Poetics of Fubutsu, which provides elemental damage bonuses, enhancing the whole party's attack capabilities. What when the energy hell? is full, Kaidahara Kazuha unleashes his elemental burst, generating an autumn whirlwind field. And then it's the game over, baby. The perfect conditions for elemental reactions, you. turning your party into a force to be reckoned with. Kaidahara oh. Kazuha is no aimless wanderer. He has a deep sense of purpose. The young samurai left his homeland behind not to part with the past, but in the search for a new hope. He's so As cool. As he navigates his path, he charts a course through the myriad of storms that come his way. His exposure to the elements keeps him in touch with nature and connects him with other people who cross his path. Those who choose to defy the gods are destined for hardship. But even a maple leaf blowing in the breeze, if it falls into the right company, can learn to sail the storm winds of the sea to shores beyond the horizon. Oh, I need him. Like I said, I feel like he's a necessity. He's just that good. Now we have Kamisato Ayaka. Or Kamisato Ayaka? In Inazuma City, 
the Shirasagi Himegimi is a name known to all. Those fortunate enough to meet Kamisato Ayaka in person Ayaka. describe her as the princess of the Kamisato clan. Wow, this place is beautiful. Graceful and dignified as a snow crane, but kind and gentle like a dove. Oh, wow. She brings joy and hope to everyone she meets. The other half of perfection is, of course, martial prowess. What a beautiful character. So when character. Kamisato Ayaka draws her blade and assumes a fighting stance, her opponent should beware. Kamisato Ayaka, present. What a voice, too. God damn. A master damn. of the Inazuman Kamisato art of Tachijutsu, Kamisato Ayaka has honed her blade work to the pinnacle of proficiency. She combines swift wow. and agile strikes with the power of cryo to fight back against those of malicious intent. As the daughter of the Yashiro Commission's Kamisato clan, Ayaka is versed in a variety of art forms. Why does it feel like her she fights with emotion? The, art of the sword includes knowledge of advanced weaponry. Maybe it's the music. God damn. When Ayaka crafts weapon ascension materials, she has a certain chance to receive double the product. Love that. Ayaka's normal attack can combo up to five strikes that deal physical damage to enemies. And then straight through him again. I like that. Holding the attack button consumes a set Ooh. amount of stamina to perform the EI technique, unleashing a series of blade winds that deal physical damage to enemies. Wow, okay. When Ayaka sprints, she cloaks herself in frozen fog, consuming yes. stamina oh. to move as a rapid torrent. While in her That's Senho incredible. State, Ayaka can travel swiftly over water. When she leaves Senho State and reappears, she applies the cryo element to nearby enemies. Oh, I love it. It's like the opposite also, of, uh, well, it's like the cryo, cryo version of Mona, right? Duration. Instead of Hydro? The cryo infusion converts Kamisato Ayaka's attack damage to cryo damage. After unlocking the talent Kanten Senyo Blessing, oh my if the cryo energy released when exiting Kamisato Art Senho comes into contact with an enemy, Ayaka will regain some stamina. Additionally, she will gain a temporary cryo what was damage that? Bonus. Proficient use of these skills allows Kamisato Ayaka to move freely around the battlefield. That guy looks dangerous. In the strongest possible position. A flick of the wrist with the poise of a dancer, and Heel Frost cut. goes flying. Tapping Ayaka's elemental skill summons Blooming Ice. Launching adjacent enemies and dealing AoE cryo Ooh. damage. After unlocking the talent Amatsumi Kunitsumi Sanctification for a short <laughs> duration after casting Kamisato Arkyoka, Kamisato Ayaka's normal and charged attacks deal increased damage. That's really good. That's a lot of increased damage because she attacks so quickly. She's so goddamn Kamisato cool. Kamisato Ayaka summons the frost with flawless poise, releasing a Frostflake Sekinoto that travels forward. Oh my the god. The Frostflake Sekinoto is a storm of whirling icy winds that slashes repeatedly at enemies, dealing cryo damage and blooming at the end of its duration, dealing a further bout of AoE cryo damage. Tell me that could be elementally infused. <laughs> That'd be Even so cool. In the heat of battle, Kamisato Ayaka is the picture of elegance. She really Her own is. Bladework philosophy adds finesse to Kamisato Art's Tachi Jutsu. With the choreography of a crane in the snow, she defeats her foes in a dance of frost. When the battle begins, Ayaka enters her Senho state, then swiftly draws near to her enemies to launch her attack. The versatile range them. of cryo abilities at her disposal creates opportunities to oh coordinate God. with her teammates. She gains She's control so cool. over her enemies, then alternates between normal and charged attacks to take them down one by one. When energy <laughs> is full, Kamisato Ayaka unleashes her elemental burst to deal further damage and clean up the field. Yeah, that's one way to put it. Oh my gosh, she's so cool. <laughs> when Inazuma locals discuss the Yashiro Commission, they are full of praise for Kamisato Ayaka's cordial manner and sincerity of speech at social gatherings. Aww. When the name Shirasagi Himegimi is uttered, it is done so in tribute to her flawless etiquette and impeccable character. But what can anyone know of how Ayaka views herself in her innermost being? Hmm. As the princess of the Yashiro Commission's Kamisato clan, Ayaka shoulders her family's duty to cherish the aspirations of ordinary people. 
but she also has dreams of her own that she holds dear. Perhaps the thing that she really needs is a companion on her journey with whom to share a pot of tea and to play a game of Go. Go? And with whom to stand shoulder to shoulder when it comes time to draw her blade. She's incredible. What a beautiful character in every sense of the word. God damn. And now we have Yoimiya, Whispers of the Flames. If you ever make it to Inazuma and ask the locals what to see while you're there, nearly everyone you talk to will emphatically recommend a fireworks display. Like shooting stars in reverse, they fly up into the night. I remember Yoimiya color, now. Illuminating the sky and sea and the faces of those watching below. This short but dazzling spectacle is all the work of one woman, Inazuma's most skilled fireworks expert, Yoimiya. She just makes you smile. <laughs> Let me give this shooting fireworks straight into the skies of the boat business a shot. <laughs> In oh. Yoimiya's capable hands, her spectacular fireworks are not just the grand finale of a festival. They also make highly potent weapons for protecting her friends and fighting her foes. And no one has a flair for fighting with fireworks quite like her. Oh my god. Yoimiya's handiwork is exquisite, and she dabbles in many other crafts besides firework making. Always adding her unique touch to all her work. Oh? When Yoimiya crafts decorations, ornaments, and landscape furnishings, a portion of the materials used will be refunded. Cool, okay. Her normal attack can combo up to five consecutive shots, dealing physical damage. Holding the attack button executes a more precise aimed shot that deals there it increased is. damage. What Based was that? On the charge time, the aimed shot generates different effects. Charge level 1 fires off a flaming arrow that deals pyro damage. Okay. At charge level 2, depending on the exact charging time, the aimed shot generates up wow. to 3 kindling arrows when she releases it. Wow. Kindling arrows okay. hold on nearby enemies, dealing pyro damage. Tap Yoimiya's elemental skill and she waves a sparkler causing a ring of saltpeter to surround her and sending her into the Niwabi Ensho state. Oh my god, her attacks are visually time, stunning. Arrows fired by Yomiya's normal attack will be blazing arrows, increasing their damage and converting the attacks to pyro damage. This is incredible. This is actually incredible. However, during Niwabi Ensho, Yomiya's normal attack, firework flare-up, will not generate kindling mm. arrows at charge level 2. I feel like that's fair. After unlocking the talent Tricks of the Troublemaker, during Yoimiya's elemental skill duration, when her normal attack hits an enemy, she gains a stackable pyro damage bonus, which lasts for three seconds. Ooh, stackable too? I wonder if it re refreshes upon each stack. Here come the fireworks! Yoimiya leaps into the air, together with her original creation, Ryukin Saxifridge. Firing forth blazing rockets, what is that bursting with surprises that deal AOE pyro damage, oh my God. and mark one of the hit enemies with Aura's Blaze. All attacks by any party member other than Yoimiya that hit an enemy marked by Aura's Blaze will trigger explosions, dealing AOE pyro damage. Yep. Yeah, the attacks are stunning. If the enemy I mean, affected by Aura's Blaze oh. is defeated before it expires, the Please effect will pass on to another nearby enemy oh, who wow. will inherit the remaining duration. Okay, so it doesn't refresh Aura's the time. Blaze explosions are subject to a short cooldown. <laughs> after unlocking the talent Summer Night's Dawn, for a short duration after casting Yoimiya's Elemental Burst, nearby party members other than Yoimiya herself gain an attack bonus. This bonus is based on the number of Tricks of the Troublemaker stacks Yoimiya possesses when she unleashes her elemental burst. Okay. Armed with a pyrovision, Yoimiya has more than one way of playing with fire. This power takes her skills with the bow to another level. Hmm? Turning even her arrows into fireworks that send sparks flying all over the battlefield. In battle, 
Yoimiya begins by using her elemental skill to enter the Niwabi Ensho state. Then she engages the enemy oh with enhanced God. normal attacks, using tricks of the Troublemaker to stack up a pyro damage bonus. That is so good. When Niwabi Ensho ends, if her energy is full, she unleashes her elemental burst to further pressure the enemy, then leaves the field, Hutao. supporting the rest of her team with an attack bonus and pyro damage. My god, Hutao is incredible. Watching the enemy disappear in a dazzling display of light and smoke. As the explosions in the sky fade away, I have no words. spectators find their friends and leave. No words. But Yoimiya is already busy preparing for the next display. It is a time-honored routine, unchanging night after night. And everyone in Inazuma looks forward to the splendid sight of her latest creations. After a brief moment, the dazzling flashes fade and the crowds are gone. After hundreds of years, this sight oh. is nothing new to me. But who's to say that brief moments of splendor can't become everlasting memories? The god who pursues eternity <laughs> has yet to realize that not all that endures is constant. Time can keep fireworks in people's minds long after they've faded. Just as, once in a while, it can send stars fixed high above. It's so cute. down to the ground. I really like learning the tiny little nitbits of information about the characters in these. It's so interesting. And now we have Sayu, Whirling Wind Wheel. Ninjas are often portrayed moving under the veil of night, stealthily conducting their mission in the shadows. As mm -hmm. such, people tend to let their imaginations regarding ninjas run wild, filching objects in a flash, vanishing without a trace, and laying poisonous traps. Such skills are necessary to be worthy of the ninja title. But in the eyes of Ninja Sayu, no matter how profound the art of ninjutsu may be, it is to be used but for a single purpose, slacking off. <laughs> to this ninja who never passes on an opportunity to be lazy, the stirring of the leaves is not the opportune diversion to strike her enemy. Rather, it's a favorable out. time to slip away for a nice nap. I love the run Sayu, so much. Matsuban, at your disposal. Phew. But if you don't need me right now, <sighs> I'm gonna grab some sleep. Sayu is the Shumatsuban's resident ninja. Is Sayu the character voiced by Lily Pichu? Let me know down in the comments. That sounded a lot like Lily Pichu. And the last successor of the Yuhu art. She uses the power of Animo to swiftly move across the battlefield. Oh my gosh, she is Sonic. And wields a claymore much heavier than herself to protect her companions. She's strong. As a master slacker, Sayu's most <laughs> adept ninjutsu technique is the art of holding her breath. Oh my god. When Sayu is in the party, your characters can approach crystal flies, lizards, and other certain animals without startling them. Wow, okay. Good for Sayu's gathering. Sayu's normal attack can combo up to four strikes, dealing four? physical damage to enemies. Holding the attack steadily consumes stamina. While Sayu spins okay. her claymore, dealing physical damage to nearby enemies. Once Sayu stops spinning her blade, she unleashes a more powerful strike that launches smaller enemies within her range. Tap Sayu's elemental skill to perform a special ninjutsu technique of the Yuhu art, in which Sayu curls up and enters the Fufu wind wheel state and rolls forward for a certain distance, smashing into opponents at high speed, dealing oh, ammo damage. When the skill ends, Sayu performs a Fufu whirlwind kick, dealing AoE ammo damage. I love it. Holding her elemental skill casts Yuhu art Fuin Dash, causing Sayu to roll continuously in the Fu Fu oh, wind wheel state, increasing Sayu's resistance to interruption while within that state. Oh, that's cool. During okay. this time, Sayu can control the direction of her roll and can cast the skill again to end her wind wheel state early. Upon ending it, she unleashes a stronger version of the Fu Fu whirlwind kick, oh, dealing God. a single instance of AoE animo damage. The longer Sayu remains Sayu in looks her really wind wheel fun. state, the longer the skill's cooldown will become. After holding oh God, her elemental okay. skill and entering long. the wind wheel state, if Sayu comes into uh, contact oh with Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro, that's cool. Elemental absorption will occur, causing her to absorb that element and deal additional elemental damage of that type. Oh my gosh, she's setting everything on fire. Absorption may only occur once per use of this skill, 
Her and Clea be best friends. With a deft use of Fu Fu Wind Wheel State, Sayu can swiftly roll across the battlefield to trigger swirl reactions <laughs> in tandem with other party members. That's so cool. In the open world, Sayu can make use of her Fu Fu Wind Wheel to quickly cover distances, aiding with exploration. Mujina Flurry. Elemental burst to deal animo damage to nearby opponents, as well as heal all nearby party members. The amount of HP restored is based on Sayu's attack. Additionally, okay. Sayu performs another ninjutsu technique of the Yuhu art, summoning <laughs> Sayu's trusty helper, Muji Muji Daruma. Oh At my specific god. Intervals, Muji Muji Daruma will take one of several actions based on the situation around it. Muji Muji if the Daruma? HP of nearby characters is relatively high, it will attack a nearby opponent, dealing animo damage. I love it. I love it so much. If there are nearby characters with HP below a certain percentage, it will heal the character with the lowest HP percentage left. The amount it's... of HP restored is based on Sayu's attack. That's really good. I like if how it's based on her attack and not nearby, health. Then it will focus on healing characters. Even if the characters already have relatively high percentages of HP. <laughs> After Give him a top unlocking off. the talent, no work today. When Muji Muji Daruma heals a character, it will also heal a certain percentage of HP for other nearby characters on the battlefield. Wow, okay. And when it attacks opponents, it will have an increased oh. AoE. God oh, damn, that's a huge Perhaps AoE. In Sayu's heart, being neither eye-catching nor of extraordinary strength, she feels that her teammates are better suited for tackling the tasks at hand. Oh. In the meanwhile, Sayu can ensure they stay fit for combat. When Sayu triggers a swirl reaction on the battlefield, she will regenerate HP for your characters in the party and all nearby allied characters. Hey, that's not a small amount of amount HP of either. Will also benefit from Sayu's elemental mastery. Ooh, okay. This effect can occur only once per set time period. That makes sense. Though it may seem she has a lot of healing. Sayu is always slacking off. She is still quite loyal to her commitments. It's or me. Or to put it another way, inescapable duties. She rolls nimbly across the battlefield, <laughs> providing reliable support to her teammates. In combat, Sayu relies on her Fu Fu Wind Wheel to move swiftly, quickly Incredible. closing the distance on her enemies and crashing into them to trigger swirl reactions, while simultaneously providing healing for her team. When energy is full, Sayu can unleash her elemental burst to summon Muji Muji Daruma. Whether it's to heal her teammates or to increase damage against her opponents. Or both. Muji Muji Daruma can adapt oh to the God. situation Xiao and protect Sayu's precious companions. I love Xiao. Striving for the dreams of your youthhood is an admirable thing indeed. <laughs> Only by improving yourself can you Muji face Muji. the vicissitudes of life. And when it comes to improving yourself, whether it's sharpening your combat skills or simply trying to grow taller, to the young, <laughs> anything worth striving for is a truly valuable endeavor. <laughs> now that I think about it, I too was probably once that way. Naive, I think we all were. Persistent and untiring. Mm hmm. <laughs> I'm only joking, of course. I've long forgotten the happenings of hundreds of years ago. God damn it. Hundreds of years? Okay, now we have the Raiden Shogun, Tranquil Thunder. I'm excited to see the Raiden the Shogun. The, Azumans, the Raiden Shogun is not only an Archon, but also a symbol. My bad. She is their superior leader who embodies eternal thunder and radiance. Her Excellency, the almighty Narukami Ogosho, a thousand-year-old protector of Inazuma. Little do they know that the current ruler of Inazuma, the Raiden Shogun, God. residing high up in Tenshukaku, is no longer the same Archon who emerged victorious from the Archon War. She looks incredible. The campaign begins. The Buba Sword. The Raiden Shogun is a martial artist in pursuit of perfection with a sole goal of achieving eternity. No matter who stands in her way to eternal euthymia, they have no chance against the divine punishment that shines down with her bidding. She's lightning. It was the Raiden Shogun who originated the Inazuman art of sword and polearm, as well as a variety of blade forging techniques. 
when ascending swords and pole arms, the amount of oh. Mora spent by the Raiden Shogun will Wow, be it's halved? Pretty much? The Raiden Shogun's normal attack can combo up to five Wait, strikes so does she with use her pole arm, dealing physical just pole damage. arms or swords too? Holding the attack button consumes a set amount of stamina. Just pull on the upward right? slash, dealing physical damage. Wait, that doesn't knock someone up? Seriously? Despite claiming to be detached from the mortal world, perhaps the Raiden Shogun still remembers her role as an archon. No. She accrues the aspirations of all living but, uh... creatures for her chakra desiderata. Oh, wow. When party members other than her use their elemental bursts, the Raiden Shogun will build up resolve stacks for Chakra Desiderata based on the energy cost of the bursts used. Uh -huh. Then, use up all the resolve accrued to empower her next elemental burst. The resolve accrued by Chakra Desiderata will dissipate once the Shogun is out of combat for a set time. Wait, the exalted what? Archon devoted to eternity. What caused her to stop in her tracks and listen to the wishes of her people? After unlocking the talent Wishes Unnumbered, the elemental orbs and particles collected by nearby party members will grant additional resolve wow, for okay. Chakra once per set time period. Oh, Upon I see now. Okay, that's skin, cool. I like that Shogun one. unveils a shard of her Euthymia, dealing electro damage to nearby opponents and granting nearby party members the Eye of Stormy Judgment. God damn, that is so cool. When Her abilities are great. attack and deal damage to opponents, the Eye of Stormy Judgment will unleash a coordinated attack, dealing AoE electro damage. The characters who gained the Eye of Stormy Judgment who is will that? have their elemental burst damage increased, based on the energy cost of the elemental bursts unleashed. I think that's someone we haven't seen yet. Thanks to the Eye of Stormy Judgment, the Raiden Shogun can aid her teammates without being on the battlefield. That's insane. their offensive capabilities. She's a constant now buff. You shall perish. Does she do good damage too, I'm assuming? Gathering truths unnumbered and the resolve of wishes uncounted. The Raiden Shogun unleashes the Muso no Hitotachi, healing AoE electro damage, using Muso Ishin in combat for a certain duration afterward. The damage dealt by Musou no what? Hitotachi and Musou Ishin's attacks is based on the number of Chakra Desiderata's resolve stacks consumed when this skill is used. While using Musou Ishin in combat, the Shogun's normal charged and plunging attacks will be regarded as elemental burst damage and will be infused with electro oh damage. Oh my which god, that is one of the coolest attacks when I think I've ever seen. Opponents, she will regenerate energy for all nearby party members. While in this state, the Raiden Shogun's resistance to interruption is increased, and she is immune to electrocharge damage. What? After unlocking the talent Enlightened One, if the Shogun's energy recharge surpasses a certain value, the surplus energy recharge grants her a percentage-based electro damage bonus, and more energy restoration while in Muso Ishii. The Raiden Shogun can accelerate the elemental burst rotation of her party while making the elemental bursts of her teammates more powerful. Such a seasoned leader like her remains fearless in the face of any encounter. In combat, the Raiden Shogun can use the Eye of Stormy Judgment to help teammates in difficult fights. When her teammates unleash shock. elemental bursts or collect elemental orbs or particles, this is a lot to take in. The Shogun gains more resolve for Chakra Desiderata. Wait for an opportune moment to unleash Muso no Hitotachi to deal lethal damage to your enemies. And enter Muso Ishin to clean up the battlefield while regenerating energy for the whole party. My to enable a round of elemental God. bursts that will strike foes down as fast as lightning. That's incredible. Neighboring the Dark Sea, Inazuma has witnessed many a war. That was a lot to... the pursuit of eternity and the prosperity of Inazuma, in. the Raiden Shogun stuck stubbornly to her path. That's what really interesting. Bloom, made others wither. There is no gain without the pain of loss. When facing their fears, Archons and mortals are all the same. My god, it feels like everyone's been through Yet so Archons much. Archons are born arrogant, 
By attempting I'm excited to, to learn more. The heavenly principles, she brought a disaster upon mortals. Oh my god. Perhaps some may say that I'm overstating what happened, but I'm just speaking from experience after all. Yeah, one of those you had to be there moments. Okay, now we have Aloy, Mystical Glow of Frost. I'm mean, very intrigued by Aloy. For obvious reasons. If memory serves me right, the last time an Outlander visited Tibet was centuries ago. Imagine my surprise when I discovered yet another guest during my most recent travels. A machine hunter, an outcast of the Nora tribe. Ooh, a different oh Nora. I cannot wait to learn more about her and her abilities. She looks so cute in this. Let's not dilly dally and begin our research. Aloy here. I don't know this world, but my arrows are sharp and my bow's ready. Goddamn, the VA's good. Based on my observations, Aloy is highly proficient with a bow and arrow. She can limit her prey's mobility with the power of cryo, aiding companions in setting up ambushes. Rejected by her tribe since birth, Aloy gained her hunting prowess under the watchful eye of an experienced These hunter. These cinematic shorts that they get like are incredible. Does this game have a photo mode? Hunters never rush into danger. One must tactfully hide and wait to strike. If this game has a photo mode, I'm losing half when my time Aloy's to that. In the party, animals that produce foul, raw meat, or chilled meat will not be startled when approached. Oh, wow. Aloy's normal attack deals physical damage. That makes sense, too. I like that. Consecutive shots. For a more precise aimed shot with increased damage, hold the attack button. Aiming will also accumulate frost on the arrowhead. Okay. Which will deal cryo damage once fully charged. Tap God. Aloy's elemental skill to throw a freeze bomb in the targeted direction that yes. explodes on impact, dealing cryo damage. When it detonates, the bomb will split into chill water bomblets that explode on contact with opponents or after a short delay, uh. doing cryo damage. Such an ingenious blasting design. Oh, wow, and it freezes when too? When a freeze bomb or chill water bomblet hits an opponent, the opponent's attack is reduced, and Aloy receives a coil stack, which increases her normal attack damage. When she has four stacks, the coil effect is removed, and Aloy gains rushing ice for a set time period, which additionally God, she's so increases quick. her normal attack damage and converts her normal attack damage into cryo damage. While under the effect of rushing ice, Aloy cannot receive new coil stacks. Coil effects will be cleared once Aloy leaves the field for a set time. After unlocking the talent Combat Override, for a certain duration after gaining the coil effect, Aloy increases the attack of all party members. This effect cannot stack. Just keep increasing please no, attack, she's on. fine. Aloy throws a power cell filled with cryo in the targeted direction, then detonates it with an arrow, dealing AoE cryo This damage. music is incredible. An explosive infused with elemental energy. Remarkable. If utilized in the right time and place, its effectiveness will be indisputable. Okay. A good hunter can deliver a decisive blow or hold their own during a long battle. After unlocking the talent Strong Strike, when Aloy is in the rushing ice state conferred by Frozen Wilds, her cryo damage bonus gradually increases. Oh, I love that passive. Okay, that's really cool. Aloy is a skilled hunter who moves with great oh my God. precision like a cat in pursuit of its prey. It'll be difficult to escape her attacks once she locks onto her target. <laughs> Any foe can be conquered with the joint forces of her and her companions. Yes. In combat, Aloy often opens up with her freeze bomb and accumulates coil stacks while her teammates launch their attacks. Once an opponent is hit by a freeze bomb or chill water bomblet, the party's attack will be increased thanks to the combat override talent. When Aloy reaches four coil stacks, she enters the rushing ice state. Katahara is just incredible. Pierce enemies with biting frost. He's one of my most wanted. Combine this with the talent Strong Strike to constantly increase Aloy's cryo damage during rushing ice. When her energy is full, Aloy unleashes her elemental burst that wipes out opponents in the target area. She seems like a lot of fun to play.
I hope you found my research as informative as I did. As a sorceress, mm -hmm. I love making new discoveries, examining all kinds of otherworldly things, and using that knowledge to create something new. Maybe Aloy and I are more alike than it may seem. A sorceress? Though she plays so many roles in her homeworld, Aloy begins her journey into Vat with a clean slate. She'll get to know new places, meet new companions, okay. and reconsider what her homeland means to her. With her survival skills, adventuring into Vat should be a please. Oh, if only she'd let me tinker <laughs> with her bombs a little. <laughs> Okay, Aloy is very, very fun. And now we're on to what I think is the final one. Kujo Sara, Thunderstrike Feather. Let's have a look at this one. The Tengu of Inazuma dwell in the mountain forests, rarely appearing in human society. To live among humans as Kujo Sara does, not to mention serve as their army general, is almost unheard of. One wonders if, in her eyes, the profound seclusion of the densely wooded mountains and the eternity pined for by the Raiden Shogun bear any similarity to each other. Okay. I will lead us to victory. As general of the Tenryo Commission, Kujo Sara is a fearless warrior and a formidable leader. As one of Tengu blood, oh, she, she can looks summon so the mighty power of Tengu Jurai to rouse her troops as she leads them into the heat of battle. The Tengu are known for Wait, their agility. What? And Kujo Sara knows Inazuma exceptionally well, as her role requires her to move around frequently and rapidly. When Kujo Sara is dispatched on an expedition in Inazuma, she completes the task in a reduced time. Kujo Sara's normal attack can combo up to five consecutive shots, dealing physical damage. Okay. Holding the attack button executes a more precise shot that deals increased damage. And a lot of AoE well, too, but lots of things. Lightning accumulates on the arrowhead. An arrow fully oh. charged with the storm's might will deal electro damage to enemies on impact. When Kujo Sara casts her elemental skill, she retreats rapidly with the speed of a Tengu, then summons cool. the protection of the crow feather in the form of crow feather cover. When Kujo Sara fires a fully charged aimed shot, crow feather cover is consumed, oh, and a what? crow feather is left where the arrow strikes. After a short duration, the crow feather triggers Tengu Jurai Ambush, which deals electro damage to enemies in its AoE. Oh, that's and cool. And grants the active character within its AoE an attack bonus, based on Kujo Sara's base attack. Oh, skill she's a synergizer. Okay. Allows Kujo Sara to rapidly evade enemy attacks. Okay. And also set the stage for a robust counterattack from an advantageous position. After unlocking the talent Immovable Will, after gaining Crow Feather Cover by casting her elemental skill, Kujo Sara's aimed shots reach full charge more quickly. That's really, Kujo really cool. Sara is an intelligent and capable general. Troop morale is all the stronger just for knowing she is in command. After unlocking the talent Decorum, when Tengu Jurai Ambush hits an enemy, all party members restore some energy. Ooh. The amount of which is based on Kujo Sara's energy recharge. This effect can Makes be sense. triggered once per set time period. Glory to the Shogun! Wow, did those wings? Oh Kujo my god! Sara casts down Tengu Jurai Titan Breaker, dealing AOE electro damage. Afterwards, Tengu Jurai Titan Breaker spreads out into four consecutive bouts of Tengu Jurai Storm Cluster. It's a four. That's, that's so cool. Both Titan Breaker and Storm Cluster can provide the active character within their AoE with the same attack bonus as given by Tengu Jurai Ambush. What? Oh my gosh, she's an incredible synergizer. The bonus provided by various kinds of Tengu Jurai cannot be stacked. The effect and duration is determined by the last Tengu Jurai to take effect. Okay. Kujo Sara is a seasoned war veteran. Oh, what were you and shooting? A leader greatly admired by her subordinates. She uses the secret techniques of the Tengu to bolster her forces and empower them to win victory after victory. In battle, Kujo Sara must make deft use of her elemental skill to adjust her strategic wow, position. Wow, that was really good timing. <laughs> charge shots to trigger Tengu Jurai ambush, dealing damage to the enemy while providing attack bonuses to teammates and restoring energy for the whole party. When energy is full, 
Gujo Sara unleashes her elemental burst to assault the enemy, and once again provide a Tengu Jurai attack bonus, paving the way for her forces to swoop in and crush the enemy's defenses. That cracked floating mask, oh my As god. As a Tengu raised by humans, Gujo Sara heeds the call of humanity, forsaking her own kind, to fight for the mortal world in battle. Perhaps those who achieve such outstanding feats are too satisfied with their own brilliance to realize that their god has raised them in a prison. Sometimes I cannot decide whether the greater tragedy is to have lost all one's own ambition or to have adopted the wishes of a god as one's own. <laughs> My god. Oh, and that was Kujo Sara. Well, ladies and gents, that was all 23 of the collected miscellany videos that we had today. I want to give a huge thank you once again to everybody that is liking the video, subscribing to the channel, dropping a follow on Twitch, just everything, honestly. Um, the support from you guys is, is incredible, and I really do appreciate it. I'm really excited to get to know this community better, really excited to play the game. And if you have any other videos that you want me to react to specifically, Drop them down below in the comments. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any future videos. And it helps me out massively. And leave a like on the video. I will see you next time. Peace.